This CEO's company is kind of a crazy one, since this is not your typical brand or CEO. Check out this news aired talking about him. All visionaries who came before him, the owner of bikinis is not content to rest on those laurels. So he bought a town in Texas and renamed it Bikinis. CEO Doug Guller is all ready for his undercover assignment. My employees will have no idea that this is actually undercover boss. The very first job that Guller heads to is an absolute train wreck. Just look at how irresponsibly the bartenders are handling their customers. Why are we not acting on this right now? Should I give him a water? Whatever. He's doing good. Safety is paramount. If this escalates, I've got to jump out of character because there's too many things at stake. How about another double? On his second job, Guller is revealed to the fact that his employees don't think that ownership is backing them up. Does it, does it, do you get a lot of support uh, from the ownership? Not really. No. Two jobs down and headed to the third. It looks like some drama is about to break out. Coming up, Jake meets a bikini babe with a bone to pick. When your management expects so much of you, but they don't give anything back, like respect, then you don't want to work for anyone like that. Miller is at the first and one of the biggest outlets they own, and he himself tries to heckle a customer. Yeah, yep. All right. And then we have the jerk. There you go. It's not what I think of you. Guller then proceeds to talk to the server and gets to better know why his restaurant isn't booming with customers. I get on my phone. You can do, I haven't seen any managers here. We don't, I mean, they're both here, but they're hiding in the back. Uh, we don't need them right now. Oh, okay. Guller is paired up with Grace, and by talking to her, he learns a lot about why his company is not what he thought. Then, like, they, like respect, then you don't want to work for anyone like no, that. Of course not. Who hires the managers? People in corporate who hire our managers. Who hire the managers. Mm -hmm. Looks like the whole day has been a huge miss. Guller's expecting to be impressed at one of the locations, at least, but he is yet again disappointed when this this happens. We had a situation. Two of the girls that we had here decided to just get dressed and walk out the back door. Right now? Yeah, they're gone. Guller is really taken aback by all that is happening. And this is what he has to say about it. Makes you think about the big picture. Why would they quit the team? So I kind of felt like they were quitting me. And that was a little hard for me to take. If we would have been slam packed right now, they totally would have screwed up my night. This time around, Guller's got a hold of the manager of this branch. And what she has to say isn't positive either. When you put so much into it and you try to make it fun for the girls, and then when they just give up like that, it's a little frustrating. It's time for Guller's reveal. And the bartender he most wants to talk to is Jessica, the one who served too many drinks to a customer. I was really getting nervous for his safety and his overall health, and I wanted you to take more control over the situation. Right. After talking to her, Guller then goes on to deliver the bad news to her. But you're not right for bikinis. It was clear to me that day. So I'm sorry, Jessica. It's not working out. Today's your last day. Jessica can't help but cry after Guller lets her go. The guy I give you my resume who just fired me to help me get a new job. As Jessica walks out, the camera crew follows her, and this is what she has to say. At the same time, that's my job, and I still told everyone that I humble myself to do what I got to do. That doesn't make me a horrible person just because I'm not satisfied where I'm at. That was quite a brutal firing. CEO Harlan Ken is going undercover as Dan Johnson, and is ready to try and understand his business better. My coworkers will be told that I'm a contestant on a reality TV show called Second Chances, where I'm given a second chance at starting a new line of work. Ken's first job is at their South Deerfield branch. Just check out how cool this is. This is the most important store in terms of setting the tone for the Yankee Candle brand. Kent already has an idea of what he wants to see. Is there a real focus on customer service? Are people having fun and are they feeling good? Because when people are feeling good, then they buy stuff. Ken is paired up with Blaze, one of the young sales associates. Are you trying with it today? Yes, cool. We're going to do a few different things. We're going to do uh, wax hands, which is just make a cast of your hand out of wax. It's definitely popular. Right off the bat, Blaze doesn't seem too thrilled to be working here, and Kent is slowly catching on to the fact. Guest comes up, you have the chart. Yep. And the instructions to make a rainbow. Over here, the biggest pain is just, you know, kids are going to get messy. The first customer approaches, and of course, it's a kid. Blazin can't handle the customer well while making the kid feel comfortable. Done this before? 
Yeah. You have? Russell? Here? Nice. Okay. Oh, is that a Christmas tree? Oh, that's so yeah, pretty. Nice. Get is happy with that interaction, but this is when Blaze turns around and says that he believes otherwise. Okay. Is that it? Great. Thank you very Thank much. You. Have a great day. These people are incredibly nice. They're not all going to be like that. Blaze even goes as far as reenacting what he thinks happens when kids are involved in such an activity. Oh my god. <laughs> they can do whatever they want. Almost go. Blaze is on fire. He's so riled up by this one little thing that you won't believe what he says next. Well, no, no. You, you definitely just dropped that in there. Because here. And there has been instances where you're going to want to strain and we'll slap a kid. He said what? Blaze then reveals to Kent that he is indeed a hot-headed person and isn't the most patient either. <laughs> oh. I'm completely honest with you, I have the worst temper. Kent is concerned for Blaze since he has such awful thoughts. As much as you hate whoever you're working with. He's angry about some things. I'm, I'm not sure what exactly it is that's making him angry, but that's not great for all the rest of the team. Blaze doesn't stop there. He continues to say things like, They'll dip it a million times leave you a mess like this. As bad as this comes across, sometimes I feel like punching an eight-year-old. Kent is like a child and enjoys everything happening at the place, but Blaze isn't too thrilled to be there. Because it comes out of color. It's the Hulk. It's Absolutely. <laughs> so cool. It's a weird situation to throw yourself into, throwing people's hands in. At the time of a reveal, Blaze has only come to realize that he's jeopardized his job. Blaze, imagine meeting you here. So I was curious to catch up with you, as you can imagine. Kent then has a talk with Blaze before deciding not to fire him, despite all that. Jim Blaze, using inappropriate language, especially in a place where you're trying to create a great atmosphere, and that's just uh, the wrong time. Good boss, bad employee. Blaze is lucky to have gotten that second chance. The next boss on this list is one of the first to travel all the way to Mexico undercover. Being the first boss to travel to foreign soil. I get you wet? I'm a little wet. But will he be able to keep his cool the second time around? This isn't the first rodeo for Stephen J. Klubik since he had previously done an undercover episode, and that was a big fail. I knew my costume during the first time was just horrific. <laughs> is determined to make it work this time, and the preparation is underway. Stylist, do my hair. I love it. Hey, Steve. I'm going to have my doctor come over and pierce my ears. Right off the bat, Klubik is not impressed with how the room is being kept. Old time sofa bed. Needs some work. Look at this bed. It needs to be wiped down. Klubik doesn't like the way housekeeping is doing their job, and he finds faults throughout the room. Absolutely disgusting. Uh-oh. Absolutely filthy. There's a lot of issues in housekeeping and maintenance here. Klubik then calls in the housekeeping to see what's up, but the employee Archie himself doesn't have anything good to say about the hotel. She's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, we'll look into it. And then, nothing. I would not spend that kind of money at a place like this. So you tell guests this all the time. This is very worrying, since if this is the way the staff talks to the guests, it's going to affect the entire business. I don't tell guests all, all the time. You're talking to me, you're telling me. Right, and I, I just, and then it I can't do anything about it, so. Uh, exactly. After listening to Archie's story, Klubeck does this. I gotta be straight with you. Okay. I'm Stephen J. Klubeck, chairman and CEO of Diamond Resorts. I own this property. Klubeck then heads out to the second hotel, where he works as a dance instructor. Let's give it up for Jacob! So how did Mark do? Come on! Looks like things are going great, but there's just one tiny issue. As far as getting the guests involved, you yeah. did do good. On dancing? One out of ten? One, and that's me being nice. At his fifth job, Lubick is working at the front desk and is paired up with Stephanie. And this is when he realizes that there's something really awful going on. Because mm -hmm. I'm trying to learn all the, the workings. I, and the laws say that you can't keep credit card numbers. Well, I'm I'm not aware or... Lubick is genuinely concerned as this could become trouble later on down the line. We live with them because what they're doing is wrong. But there are privacy laws on that. You're probably right. It's very problematic. While Stephanie teaches Klubik how to work the front desk, a concerned guest has arrived. Card that gives you 10% off discounts. And there's all these items that were not discounted because they didn't present the card ahead of time. Klubik doesn't waste any time and reveals himself as the owner. 
He then goes on to confront the staff at the front desk. I own Diamond Resorts. I'm not happy. I'm really not happy about this. Well, Come on, guys. I just How can we make this mistake? From all this, Lubick has understood one thing, and that is... Okay, I am so disappointed. The other properties aren't up to Diamond standards, but it's understandable because their teams haven't even been... Lubick has quite the work cut out for him. Next, the CEO of Hooters, Kobe Brooks, heads out to try and find how well things are going in this company. The co-workers I'll be working with will be told that I will be followed by a documentary crew doing a documentary on entry-level positions. His first job is at the largest outlet he owns, and he's decided to work in the back station. But little does he know, he has his work cut out for him. Start cleaning out the bus stuff, get, get the bus stuff squared away. That's it. Go. That trash don't get out by itself, guys. Brooks himself admits that this job got the better of him. I'm exhausted already. It's been 20 years. Tough. Since I've done any restaurant jobs, and it's uh, it's tough. Brooks later heads out to the second location where he isn't doing a typical job. Uh, I, I will not be a Hooters girl. I have the wrong parts. I want to say it. <laughs> I have the wrong parts. Got some free wing samples here. This is when Brooks is able to get a better understanding of how people with families react to Hooters. You guys ever been to a Hooters? Yes. Do you like going? No. I think it exploits women. Really? It'd be hard to justify. Brooks talks more about the interaction. I've never seen it firsthand, you know, with the public versus our Hooters girls one-on-one. -on -one. I've never seen that before. That was that was a little bit eye-opening. That's definitely a, a burden. For the third job, all eyes on the manager, Jimbo, since this manager is more like a coach. He's got to make sure the, the, the entire team works good together. We're going to listen to the way he conducts himself and how he talks to his staff and just see exactly, you know. Brooks doesn't look like he's too impressed with Jimbo or his methods. You with me? He's running the show. I'll probably be back in the kitchen helping out. Okay, who's your man in Amsterdam today? All right, let's go! Jimbo keeps commenting on the girls, and this is making Brooks very uncomfortable. Compliment her on her lack of nails. My, those are some non-glamorous nails you have. Have a seat. Jimbo's methods are quite weird, but is it as effective? Brooks is going to have to figure that out by himself. If y'all have any problems, it's, uh, it's, it's me. It's not here. Spinning a tray is rule number one. Later, when Brooks tries to converse with a customer, you won't believe what Jimbo does. You can't look at the babies, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, that's enough kissing on the babies. That's a, I like it. So. Cool. Rookie. After the service, the girls are all rounded up to play a game. Jimbo sure has some weird ideas. Okay, so maybe we'll do a bean eating contest, all right? Maybe we'll get all the girls and shove their faces down in the beans and have them clean it up, you know? All right. Mm. Brooks isn't too happy with this since... If you want to play some games, there's other games you can play. It, it's disheartening. Are you serious? No. When the game starts, Brooks is infuriated as Jimbo goes around his idiotic rituals. Oh, look. Ooh, doggy. Okay. Brianna, how are they, baby? Oh, they look tasty. Who doesn't want to spend the rest of the afternoon with me? Brooks hates that this is happening, but for the sake of the show, lets it run for a while longer. Mmm, yeah! The things I saw today were, they were inappropriate, they were wrong, I don't want any- Would you want to work at this Hooters? I sure as hell don't. Last but not least, we have Rick Foreman, the owner of Foreman Mills, a supermarket that sells things at an affordable rate. Customer ridiculous buys on thousands and thousands of name brands. Foreman is quite the formidable businessman, and he absolutely believes in his own ability. In the long run, and we make money on volume. It's like the goose that laid the golden egg. Take their money. That's our number one priority. Take their money. Foreman devotes his life to his company and works non-stop. We can see that he pushes himself to do what is necessary. I think I'm a little bit insane if you compare me to other people. I know where I got that file at. Foreman goes undercover as Brad Vandini, a retired football coach. Audi TV show. The last time I was this nervous, I was walking down the aisle, getting ready to say I do. Foreman first heads out to one of the underperforming stores to figure out what's going on there. Brace and push back your blacks. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Brad. Stay focused. Stay with me. Foreman realizes that there's so much going on that he himself can't seem to keep himself contained. I need to buy that. No, you don't. 
Most business people have ADD, so I really can't focus in there. All these items are coming at me. Foreman is so lost that the employee assigned to train him says this. So what's next? Finishing up your rack. I just, I thought I finished no, it. No, it's not finished, but I can see him running the circus because he's a total clown. Later, the cashier counter asks for a price check, and this is when Foreman eyes are opened. This is crazy, right? The price check system is so antiquated, we may as well have cavemen in there screaming out, price check, by the time we sleep. After talking to a few employees at the first branch, Foreman heads out to his second destination, and this time, he's working in the warehouse. The lack of technology in the stores all starts with me. It's very important for the distribution center to be very organized. Foreman is paired with Elizabeth for the day, and his first job is to wrap things. All the way down, all the way down. This is really That's good, stuff. that's good. Foreman fumbles the job, and Elizabeth is shocked to see such a performance. He was like all over their place. Yeah. I need a little oxygen. He's not ready for this. He, he's, he's not. <laughs> Who would think he is after that show? Elizabeth doesn't waste much more time and moves on to the next job. She should have spent more time on the previous job, since what's about to come is a true disaster. You ready for your next challenge? I'm ready. Forklift is next. I mean, huh? Forklift. Forklift. You ready? Uh-oh. I don't have a lot of experience. Foreman doesn't seem to be too confident working the forklift, and he's pretty blunt about it. Hurry up. You want to stop? Stop. You, you want to, um... Yeah, let me scared. try it. I'll try it. You try it. I'm scared I'm going to mess something up. As soon as he starts, things are starting to go haywire. Oh. Lift it up. Lift it up. <laughs> so I got to go slower than that, then? Yes. Now, does this come back? Mm-hmm. Or just what am I... Thought that was it? No, the disaster is just starting. Watch what Foreman does next. I'm getting it. You're, you're making me nervous here. <laughs> no. All right, whoa. Okay. Slow, move it. It's not going there. No, no. no. Yes, it is. Even Elizabeth is surprised at how horribly this went. Red had to drive the forklift. Oh, no. That was terrible, crazy, insane. If Foreman was really trying to start his own company, I'm sure he'd have a hard time after that horrible performance.